three things that could be sabotaging your fitness results. And I'm trying to make these as much as possible integrate into your everyday life. These aren't tips where you have to kind of set aside time to go to the go to the gym. That's going to be later videos. So what are three things that could be sabotaging you from getting the fitness results that you seek? The first one is your quality of sleep. So if you don't have high quality sleep, and it's going to be a little bit different for everybody, but some common themes are, are you getting enough deep sleep? Are you getting enough REM sleep? So deep sleep helps the muscles regenerate. REM sleep helps information processing, and it helps the brain uh, reset, right, and recover. And so if you don't get good high-quality sleep, that's going to have a cascade of negative consequences. We're going to mess up our gut biome, so the way that we digest and absorb nutrients is going to be messed up. Our cravings are going to be messed up. Our appetite is going to be off. We're going to crave more fatty foods, and then we're not going to be able to absorb the workouts because because it's not the, the workout itself. The workouts that you do break the human organism down. It's the recovery from the workout where you get the benefits. So sleep is very important. So how do we maximize or how do we improve the quality of our sleep? A few different uh, pointers here. One is light. And so or do you have blackout blinds or is there a lot of light in your room? And then the biggest thing is technology. Are you on your phone or are you on your computer up until the moment you fall asleep? And I'm, I'm very guilty of this myself. Easier said than done. But what you can do is uh, your phone and your computer has nighttime mode. So you can turn those the temperature, limit the blue light, and turn that light into orange light, which is going to still affect the quality of your sleep but it's gonna be a lot less detrimental than say a blue light. Next is temperature. Are you too hot in the room? Are you sweating or are you at a nice, cool, comfortable temperature? Next is sound and, and this is gonna be different for everybody. Some people like complete silence. Some people like a little bit of background noise. Play around, pay attention to how refreshed you feel in the morning and your energy levels throughout the day maybe you do need some of that white background noise next is the mattress we all have different preferences when it comes to a firm mattress or a soft mattress so play around with that next is safety so think about it for a second if you're a caveman and you're living in a cave and you're kind of worried that something is going to creep on creep up on you at night and you don't feel safe you're not going to have as high quality of sleep and so that's what a weighted blanket does is it makes you feel safer physiologically, biologically, psychologically. But then also the biggest one for modern day humans would be are my anxiety levels too high and are my stress levels too high. So a really quick tip to counter that if that's the case for you, you can have some moments of prayer. But if you don't believe in a higher power, you can, you can also meditate. They're very similar and you can get control over your breath. So a really quick one is what we call box breathing, where you take as big an inhale as you can for a count of four. So it's hold for four. And then exhale as slow as you can. And you do that for five to 10 minutes and when you when you think about it what is it doing you can get conscious control over your breath and your heart rate and your breathing rate are tightly linked so right if someone scares you or if you're getting ready to go for a run or higher exercise what goes on your heart rate goes up and your breathing rate goes up as well and so by slowing down the exhale what you're telling your physiology what you're telling your biology is hey we're safe here you can calm down the heart rate you can calm down stress levels you can melt away tension you can melt away and then you start to feel that heavy relaxation feeling into the blanket or into the mattress right and you and you can fall asleep a little bit more easier other more high level pro tips one is getting sunlight within the first one to two hours of Waking up within the first hour is better, but if you, if you have to wait within the first two hours, why is that? Because your circadian rhythm is tightly linked with the earth and with sunlight. And so 
by getting sunlight within the first hour of waking up, you're setting the circadian rhythm within your physiology, within your body to wake up to produce all of the underlying neurochemicals and hormones in your body to wake up and be energized throughout the day. And then as the sun goes down, your body can calm. So get sunlight within the first hour and then get sunlight again between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. for at least about, sorry about that, for about 20 to 30 second or 20 to 30 minutes within the first hour between 3 and 5 p.m. And that's going to set up your circadian rhythm. And then one last thing is our timing of our last meal. And so this is where a lot of people get into problems is because they have dinner. And then because of anxiety and stress levels throughout the day or poor nutritional habits throughout the day, they binge after that, which there's no judgment here. It's just a thing. But if you're going to, even with the binging, let's say you do binge, the, the further and further away you can eat that final meal or that final snack before going to sleep, the higher quality your sleep is going to be. And, and, and understanding why starts to resonate of, oh, okay, let me prioritize this. So why is that? When you're sleeping, your body has a finite amount of energy, and it's trying to rest and recharge and recover while you sleep. And so we talked about deep sleep helping with the muscles. We talked about REM sleep helping with the brain. Well, if there's food in my stomach, my resources have to be diverted away from recovery per se to digestion. And so the earlier that you can start that digestion process before sleeping, now those resources while I sleep can be diverted to more efficient manners of recovering the muscles and getting REM sleep. Next is hydration. So not just drinking water, but drinking water with electrolytes. So what are electrolytes? We have sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. So after sleeping six to eight hours, a good habit to get into is to get a glass of water, put a pinch of Himalayan sea salt or red salt into your water, maybe a little bit of lemon, and that's a really good way to start the hydration, set you up for success throughout the day. And so we can take about half an ounce to an ounce per um, pound of body weight or so and just play around with that. Um, if you're not used to hydrating, your metabolism is going to um, adjust, and also you might be going to the bathroom a little bit more. Give it a week or two and see if that's still the case. Don't just write it off because hydration is very important. We are 70% water, and so you need water going through. Your nervous system, your nerves are electricity. What the electrolytes do is they help that electricity flow more freely and more efficiently throughout your body. And so that's hydration. And then lastly, for this video, movement throughout the day. So if you had to pick setting aside a one hour workout at the gym or a yoga session following on um, Apple TV or YouTube or something, if you had to pick one or the other, it's more effective to get about 10,000 steps a day. We've heard that, which is about five miles of steps, so no easy task, but it's more effective for your overall fitness and health goals to get more movement throughout the day periodically, not going for longer than two to three hours without any movement. You want to get up, you want to walk around, maybe do some squats, maybe do some lunges, do some posture opening exercises. So movement throughout the day in the hierarchy is going to give you more bang for your buck than setting aside a um, workout, but some movement is better than enough. So again, these are just three, three tips that could help you stop sabotaging yourself from getting the fitness results that you seek. I'm going to have another video with three more tips as well. Let's go.